being here today. Um, we have relaunched our end user Microsoft training to help you become better users of you know, the tools that we've got here. So um, there's been some new features launched in Teams since we last met in the spring. So we'd like to show you what some of those features are. So Sean's gonna start and go through a few basic things, show you some things in the settings that you can change to personalize your Teams. Um, and then I'll jump in and show you uh, their version of breakout rooms and some other cool stuff with um, other apps. So Sean, if you wanna share your screen and take over, go ahead. Sure. Well, good morning and, and yeah, we're, uh, we're early. We have quite a bit of people or you know, users and people and customers and people dealing with fires, I'm sure signed up. So anyway, welcome. Um, if you have a sore throat, don't worry. We think it's related to the air quality. Uh, um, anyway, can you see the screen, Christy? I can, and uh, everyone, there's a Q&A at the bottom, so if you have questions as we go, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'll be monitoring those. Yeah, and I would preface everything with Teams and some of the things we're going to show today um, with, as your organization has Teams, certain things get rolled out um, as your organization gets updates from Microsoft, because if you're part of Office 365, or as they now call it, M365. So just, just be aware. Some stuff you may see that we have or that you don't have yet, or some stuff you may already have that we don't have yet. So it's just nicely rolling out. But if you ever want to see some of the new features in Teams, it's pretty straightforward to go over to Microsoft and just type in new features. July 2020 is when they really started unleashing them. Um, anyway, so yeah, we'll start here. And again, I, I think everybody, if you're using Teams, and I hope you are, and if you're not, I understand. And if you're going to ask me the question about why we're using Zoom, it's we can actually show some of the stuff in Teams uh, without having to navigate between you know these video conferences. So anyway, um, I come in every day, as everybody knows, and you know hopefully the first thing you look at is sort of activity that happens. And again, you look at it down from what is really what activity is is what's happening for you personally and people you've interacted with. And so you know, and Christy. Had a long call yesterday about Microsoft and trying to, you know, had a meeting together. Obviously, you can see Christy's presence. So that's important. Um, everybody's using the chat. And again, this goes through things in your organization that, you know, is happening. Um, for example, my VP of sales said that was rude the other day down here. And it was because I was on two conference calls and I said to her, I apologize. I had to jump on from one to another. So um, I got back to her, of course. But anyway, really incredible stuff that you're able to see really quick at a, at a glance. But um, anyway, let me, let me start here and go over here. So everybody knows that from a Microsoft Office 365 perspective, this is really where no matter what product you're in, you have your own settings and, and different things that you can do. So I'm gonna move this screen over real quick and show you guys sort of some of the things to think about. One is where you set your status, um, if you don't already do it. And again, your status is set by your calendar. So if in fact you're gonna, you know, you set a calendar out appointment and outlook and you go into a meeting, it's automatically gonna change you right into a busy status or in a meeting. If you wanna keep it so people in theory can't get a hold of you, you can put it right back on do not disturb. Um, the most important thing that I think people want to make sure that they've done in Teams is go, and let me do this again, go back up to your settings or go back to your profile, go to your settings, and then you're going to notice a lot of things that happen inside of here, whether it's, you know, you like a different color team screen, you know, I, I stick with the, the normal default. Um, some people's eyes, they like, you know, the darker screens, but ultimately down here. I've got the dark screen. <laughs> yeah, some people love it. Come down on. here, you're going <laughs> to, yes. <laughs> You're going to see things like um, new op uh, new options in Teams. For example, turn on new meeting experience. And if anybody of you guys have been watching Teams and seeing that we can now have 49 people in a Teams bridge or or on a video call, or we can act, you know go into what's called a gallery view um, or kind of a classroom view for us teachers out there, or you know healthcare professionals are using it. it's pretty amazing. Um, this is stuff where you want to make sure those things are enabled. So that is one thing I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of. The other one I thought was interesting was calls, okay? Calls, if somebody leaves you a voicemail, you're probably seeing it now inside of Microsoft Teams. But you can also go to forward my calls. And of course, you can figure your voice, you can configure your Teams app to forward to your cell phone. So if you decide to do that, I would do it in here. And um, even down here, you can kind of do the text mode where you get text messages from you know, somebody's voice that end up in Teams for you. So that is a lot of the place where 
uh, you know, call settings come in, where new updates come in. <clears throat> and I think it's important that people make sure they understand, you know, how to set those settings up. Um, the devices, you know, you can do that on one of these conference calls or you can do it from here. And for example, I use a headset as everybody knows, but ultimately if you decide to use just the speakers in your computer or a different type of, you know, webcam down here, so you have one plugged in or using you know, some secondary webcam, you can do it from here or inside of the call. So I thought, you know, making sure that everybody knew that uh, would be important. And just to so, note, when you, when you check off that enable the new Teams features, you're gonna have to restart Teams. And in some cases you might have to restart uh, your computer too. And then once it yep. reloads, everything will be there, so. Yep. So I won't go into Teams today too much, aside from people ask us all the time, again, what do I need to know about setting up a team and a channel? And so everybody has learned, I hope through our trainings that a team is what in most organizations we would consider departments. Um, in some organizations within healthcare, we're seeing you know, different doctors set up their own set of clients to have video sessions with them. And if you are in the healthcare space or pharma and you have patient information or EHR platforms, you can integrate them into Teams um, and actually keep notes about patients and what's happening within Teams that can funnel back over into your third party app, say it's Epic or all scripts or one of those Cerner or one of those platforms that people use. But needless to say, um, you know, we created a team for this, which was called our general demo team. And across the top, everybody knows that, you know, anything that's happening within your team happens here. And anything from really a file and document management, I think people is, you know, we started off with teams just for video and, and calling about what, six months ago in March. I think people are realizing that, wow, this is my whole document management platform. So, People are moving their SharePoint products into Teams, which is you know, something that we do a ton of right now. People are leveraging Teams for you know, housing all their Office and Adobe and PDF and other documents. But again, it is your file sharing system if that's what you choose it to be. Um, the other thing that you know, we thought was important is that people don't necessarily know the amount of applications that can be embedded in Teams. And I thought it was important to talk about that today and just understand that, you know, if you click on this little plus tab, you're gonna see a whole list of products and then some, and if you wanna search products that you can actually leverage and include in Teams. So a lot of people out there who use Box might wanna have that um, integrated with Teams. People who are familiar with like calendaring apps, um, I saw one up above Calendar Bot right here, they'll use it. Adobe, you really, Salesforce for CRM, you really name it, it's right there inside of Teams. So it's literally a matter of connecting up the two platforms and it's not difficult to do. But again, if you haven't done it and you're trying to bury in certain products, then you know, I highly recommend looking at Teams for that. But one product I wanted to talk a little bit about today was um, Microsoft Lists. If anybody's seen it or has not, and really what the product does, and ultimately how it's sort of integrated into Teams. Okay, so LIS is the best way to think about it, is a product where, and you saw how I just basically have it right now inside of Teams by adding it. LIS is a, pro a product where you can actually go in and you can do things from, and they're already uh, auto-created, so to speak. You can do things from you know, keeping track of issues, working through a workflow process. I'll give you a real example that we're working on right now. We have a, a marketing and advertising agency who receives um, advertisers you know, on a daily basis who want to advertise their product, but they go through a repetitive process when an advertiser comes in. For example, if they're going to do an email campaign for that advertiser, or they're going to advertise on the website, you know, uh, you know, say a, a quarter page on the website, there is a series of tracking or series of issues they have to get through from who took the first call to ultimately who um, is responsible for getting it up on the web page to uh, what email connectors or, or what email account lists are going to come in from the, in this case, uh, supplier or the manufacturer, of the, in this case, a phishing company. And ultimately, that's where these things are already, you know, sort of homegrown or are already built. So here is an example of an employee onboarding process that, you know, we have it built for our own team, meaning managed solution, but a lot of companies want to be able to come in and create sort of an on onboarding template so that everybody included in that uh, onboarding process for a company has it. So let's do this real quick. Um, I'm going to show you how simple it is to set it up. 
So employee, we create a list, it's called employee onboarding. You know, you can talk about what the list is all about. You can choose a color for the list and then you can ultimately go in and you can create it, but we've already created a list for this. So I'm gonna go back to our employee onboarding here. Um, give me one sec. It looks like we have a bunch of questions already. We do, I didn't wanna interrupt. Yeah, go for it, go for it. Um, so basic question, which is a great question because a lot of people are still learning about Teams, but what version of Office or M365 are most organizations and agencies using to get Teams access? And mm -hmm. is, there, is it an enterprise plan? So I don't know if you wanna address the licensing around that. Yeah, sure, and I'll pause on this employee onboarding here so people can see what we're doing. Um, so I'm going to keep it simple. If you're 300 users or less, a, an organization you're talking to, or you're in an organization, typically you bought into Microsoft Office 365 or Office 365 Business Premium. It was $12.50 a license. Of course, if you buy through us, we have some significant discounts. And ultimately, that is the platform that gives you your full suite of Office, so PowerPoint, Excel, Word, obviously email and it gives you Teams and Skype and some other SharePoint and other products. And that's kind of your fully baked on the desktop, um, you know, rich experience that companies look for. So that's 300 users or less. You can go down a model, or I'm sorry, down a license SKU to an $8 SKU or even a $5 SKU, which still includes Teams. And when you go down to the, the basic versions of Office 365, the best advice I can give is if you work and we have a client who is a large, um, a construction company and they have hundreds of general contractors who work in the field but need access to teams they use the basic version so just their contractors for their bait for their contractors can get into teams and be able to access information they don't have the rich experience in office because they don't need it they need basic online access to email so they can you know kind of send messages but we do different I guess licensed versions depending on the user type so we call them like a field worker or a kiosk worker if you're above 300 users, I'll keep it at this. You still have the option to buy Office 365 E3, which is basically Office, as we talked about the full suite on the desktop, Teams and SharePoint and Skype and all that good stuff. But if you wanna step up a level into the Microsoft 365 suite, think about that as like adding on security features, which a lot of them are already buried into the basic setup, but security features and what we'll call security for your organization and Windows 10. So you can license your desktop as you bring it into the organization. Um, there's no trick to it. It's just really Microsoft's way of presenting really everything, sort of the business in a box for 300 users or above. So that's Microsoft 365 E3 or Microsoft 365 E5. We go down that road, we get into the full hosted voice solution for Microsoft, which is voice within Teams, which has become really popular as of late. So I hope that yeah. answers the question. Yeah, and especially with Skype going away next year, people are not only leveraging Teams for the awesome collaboration, but the voice side as well. Um, yep. The other question was, um, is Teams designed for internal use? And so, y yes, and, and, and it's for external use as well. So, um, at Managed Solution, we use it internally, as you can see Sean's screen right now. Um, you know, we have different groups, whether like I'm on the marketing team, so there's a sales and marketing team, um, there's the senior leadership team, there's, you know, departmental teams and then project-based teams. We're a Microsoft partner, so we actually also have access to um, our Microsoft, it's a little redundant, but our Microsoft, Microsoft Teams, so we can log in and switch to Microsoft and so we can talk to our Microsoft rep over there and, and share information that way. And then we yep. also can add clients to our team. So if we're working on a project with a client and we wanna have them have more visibility on stuff or we're sharing files or whatever it is, um, we can add them. So it dep you gotta you know, configure it that way um, because there are security measures because you know, like with everything Microsoft does, security is baked in, and so they don't want anyone just being able to join. Um, as you can see on Sean's screen now, you can see he's a guest in other organizations, and that's what it would look like if you invited someone else to your Teams instance. So, yes, it's designed for internal use, but you can absolutely bring in external users. Yeah, um, and we use it religiously for on for customers. Like if we're running a project with a customer 
and we can add them to a team so we can keep track of our project plans or our, as you know, in the activity or chat area, you know, updates. So everybody who's part of that team sees what's happening. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool because it's real time. But, you know, Microsoft right there, we get on conference bridges on their team's plan all the time to talk about our monthly Know, what we're up to, how we're participating in their, their programs, how we you know, receive money from them to help you know, facilitate proof of concepts for, for customers. So yes, it's absolutely done that way. And then I thought with that question, what was interesting is that you know, we, we have an all company team, we call it all staff. And ultimately you can see, you, know, you can manage the team from there. You can see who's part of it. Obviously we have most of our employees on there. You can look at um, you know, adding a member to the team, really however you want to do it, but only the people you've added as members, and if you click here and you'll see this right here, you start typing somebody in your organization, can they join the team? Now, when you create a team, you do have the option of making it private where only the people you invite are part of it, or you can make it public where people can sort of opt in to be part of that team. And you can do that with channels too. So um, like if you're looking at the all staff channel, our team, all those channels are public. So once you're in the all staff team, you have access to all those channels underneath. But if you wanted to add a private channel and you only wanted say the senior leaders in one of the channels of the all staff, you could do that. Or if you only wanted the help desk team on a private channel, you could do that. So, yep. um, You'll see, I mean, we use like a general tab every day for anything that's going on. You know, we got, you know, promotions in the company. Um, people give a lot of kudos and, you know, as you see, gamify it down here. Videos and little snippets are so easy to add. Um, it's just a pretty unique way to get information out quickly to the company, to departments, however you want to do it. Yeah, we're big on the memes and GIFs here, which is... <laughs> a lot of fun when you're not in the office with people every day. So it's a fun way to stay connected. Yes. Um, someone asked what the difference is between a team and a channel. So the way I like to describe it and Sean, if you want to chime in too, um, a channel is basically a subset of a team. So you create a team and then within that team, you have different channels. So you see on Sean's screen, the all staff is the team. But then within all staff, obviously there's a lot of different things that pertain to all employees in the company. So, um, you know, company updates is there. We have HR and culture, which has like our benefits packages. And, you know, anytime we're doing some sort of event or meeting, we can put it in there. Um, we were doing so many memes that we just created our own meme channel. So like if people want to have a mental break in their day and, and go look at what meme, fun memes are in there. Um, onboarding, so as we onboard new employees, there's, there's documents and welcomes in there. Um, sales news, when we get wins and things like that, we'll, we'll put it in there. So it's a way to categorize and organize your team because obviously every team is going to have a lot going on. And what I always recommend to organizations adopting teams is map it out, whiteboard it, put it in Excel, whatever you like to use, figure out how you want to do it because we've seen organizations where they just create all these teams and all these channels and it's so overwhelming that you don't know where to go and it's disorganized and some people, there's redundant channels or teams and people are going here when they should go here. So if you're going to adopt teams, we really recommend that you map it out prior and less is more to start with you can always add but like what we did was um at the beginning or end of last year we consolidated a lot of channels because the sales and marketing channel had like or team had like 15 channels and there was too many disparate areas so we merged them up and i think we only have like eight channels now and it's a lot easier to find what we need yeah um, and you'll notice up here you can filter your teams a lot of people I think Chrissy's point is spot on. If anybody comes from a SharePoint background or some document management platform where you didn't organize it well, we call it taxonomy, um, really understanding what it is we're trying to build. It gets messy and the adoption gets challenging. The other side of that too is that there is a lot of security that goes on on the back end of this thing. For example, you know, as documents get uploaded, if you don't have the right policies, we'll call it security policies, rights management, or what they call data loss prevention. You know, those are tools that come inside of the Microsoft suite. 
then ultimately people can take documents out of certain teams or channels they're involved in. And you know, if you're in healthcare, you're in pharma, or you're in finance, which we deal with a lot, people can take those documents which your company from a compliance perspective doesn't allow and bring them down to their personal computers or forward them out via email. So those governance type exercises are super important. And Christy, I would, I would say we're seeing a lot of customers and I warn them that say, oh, Teams is easy to get going. It, it, it is, it is to, to take old documents and files and just put them into a team. But again, there's a lot of governance that has to happen behind this or else it kind of fails if you're not careful. Yeah, it's a, it's a really powerful tool. So you, while it's easy to use once you're in there, I find it to be really intuitive. I had never used it till I joined the managed solution team about two and a half years ago, but I love it. I'm in there every day. Um, it's just, and if you're someone who is so over getting a million emails, <laughs> This is a great communication platform where it's so easy and you can even just, you know, someone says something to you, you can go, just go like it and, and you acknowledged it, right? You don't have to respond to the email and say thanks or whatever and just, you know, so it's a nice way to kind of unclog your inbox, if you will. Yep. So let me go back and you saw me kind of hover, uh, uh, navigating back and forth. I hope you saw the back and the forward arrows here, but it just, just make sure you're aware of those. Those are new. It didn't work like that before. You had to literally go back in open up a new team, go back. So now you can toggle between teams or different places you've been by just clicking in the back and forward arrows. So it's kind of a cool feature. The, the little things that ultimately make our lives easier. It's surprising yeah. the things that we didn't have it when teams started and now we do. But so back to lists, I'm, I'm giving you a template that's just, I just started messing around this morning with it, but just how easy it is to create a list and to really keep track of how things are happening as part of that list. So let's just say in this list, we wanted to create a new item. Um, this is a new employee onboarding. We wanted to call it, you know, install uh, Salesforce, uh, you know, for the, for the company or for someone, you know, we need to have let's say it completed by a certain period of time. So say the first week one of a person's you know, start date, we do wanna put a date on it, say it's the 18th of September. Um, and of course you have to assign it to somebody who's in charge of that. So say it's uh, you know, somebody in your team, Alicia, who handles a lot of our new employee onboardings. You can add attachments, maybe you know, where to get the relevant information for Salesforce and how to do it, but ultimately, if you hit it save, you'll see it show up in your list and you'll see how it's completed on by date. And if somebody does that, who's assigned, in this case, I believe, let's say it's add the person, Amanda Hawthorne, to you know, the HR system, in our case, Paylocity, she would just click here and that would show up as completed. So anybody who's looking at tasks and items inside of these lists that's been um, taken care of can come in here and see that done. So pretty unique how Microsoft lists, which is, fairly new um, to Teams. It just came out a couple of, I think a month or two ago, Christy, has been something a lot of companies are really using for sort of task management, if you will. Yeah, um, I think different they to what, announced it at Inspire in July. In July, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's lists, and you can use it like we said for many, many things, but I thought, you know, this would be a good, you know, quick step in understanding what's possible inside of an organization. So with that said, I think the other little tidbit that people are asking a lot about is, you know, can I pin other apps? And one of the big things right now has been hosted voice solutions or video conferencing solutions so like Zoom. You can quickly add Zoom or you can quickly add Ring Central or whatever it is calling platform you're using into Teams. I think that's been a big ask as of late. Um, you know, I don't want to get away from using Zoom for the video piece, but I want to use Teams for my document management. No problem at all. And like with Zoom, we showed you here, you can go right into Zoom, you know, create your meetings. And again, those meetings could have already been created in um, Outlook or they could have been created in Gmail or through Zoom. But you, I got to log in here, by the way. And, and this is important, by the way, when people see this login, multi-factor authentication is coming into play here. So that whole, you know, I get a text on my phone with a code or I get an email in my email account or um, in some cases, thumbprints and what have you. Um, this is a good feature when people are navigating outside of your organization. And if you don't have security set up, and I'm not going to do it right now because it's going to send me a code and all that, it's important that you do. But again, all these applications are buried within. Um, recent files, if you're not looking at this stuff, recent files that you in particular have worked on, 
obviously, as we talked about all the different calls and the history of calls that have came in now, if the question comes up about, can I outbound calls to say another customer, that's where the hosted voice or the team's voice play comes in. So you have to add that SKU or add that platform for Microsoft Teams and the hosted voice so you can make outbound calls. But again, inside your organization, out of the box, Teams allows to do all the you know, conference calls, uh, video calls, you know, have all those things, and it's pretty incredible. So do you want to jump in and um, call Jessica and I on Teams and we can show how the new features in the meetings? Sure. Meetings? Yeah, matter of fact, let's just see if we, and again, just, multiple we, voices here, but since she just happens to be right here, I'll just jump her in by just clicking on her video. So just, just mute when you're on. Oh, no one's home. Oh. <laughs> and then if you want to add me to that call and then you can. Um, you sure. Can and yep, we can hear you. And then I have my webcam. Let me see if I can turn this off with Zoom. Give me one second. Yeah, you're gonna have to turn your webcam off with Zoom and I'll have to do the same when you dial me in. So I should pop up, there I am. Again, mm -hmm. hard to show things between Zoom and Teams. But essentially, let's just start with, we're gonna add Christy in here. Um, if you go to show participants, the two little people down there, I guess, the mom and the dad or whoever that is, you can, uh, you can do that very quickly. And then you can add other people to the video call, which we're going to add Christy. And she's going to pop in now. And I would like to add 49 other people today, but that would, uh, I would go broke as a company owner because then we would have everybody on calls. So you see Christy's joined us down below. So some of the new features that you may or may not have already existing in Teams are such as, um, if you use the little toggle, you're gonna be able to see things like, you know, background effects. And I don't know if anybody's played with these yet, but if you click on it, you're gonna see that now in Teams, you can add different backgrounds. And we have quite a bit. Um, I always like the Cheerios one, and I can do that for myself. Or I can even add my own company one that, you know, we've created. Christy's been working on and hard on the eyes. But that is really what, or you can just add a new background just from the internet that you find out there that you might like. Like I could probably put my photo ID behind myself, which would make a ton of sense, but it's there. So if you download a, a JPEG or something else, oops, you can do that. Oh, thank you, Christy. I was doubling up there. You're welcome. I was just echoing a little. I was trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. The raise hand feature is now there where you can go ahead and raise your hand if you have a question. Um, obviously, you can, we'll get out of this for a second. You can go ahead and start a chat session with the people on the meeting, which I think is a really unique feature. And the other thing you can do, which is really cool, is if you're in a meeting with one of your teams, you know, we have a senior leadership team meeting every morning from 8.45 till 9 to do a, have our scrum. We actually can create, take meeting notes using Microsoft OneNote to keep track of what's happening in those meetings and that gets captured forever. So um, pretty unique. They also, if you don't have it already, are coming out with um, sort of the caption view where if I'm talking and you didn't hear what I said at the bottom of the screen, it's gonna you know, bring in whatever I said and you can sort of re-listen to it and watch it on the right side of the screen. Um, the only other thing that I think that I'm not going to mess around with it too much today is if you want to share your screen, as you can see, there's a lot of different options for me. Um, you know, I could go through here and share whatever it is I'm presenting. So again, um, and let me show you guys something while we're here, just so people are interest, uh, aware. Whiteboard over here to the right is another product within Microsoft Teams that if I shared that, we would all still be on video, but I could actually be, you know, writing with my... I guess, touch pen or my finger or typing into the whiteboard, but we can also use a whiteboard to do presentations, which is really cool. We've seen it done with, obviously, with teachers quite a bit. We're seeing it done within the healthcare world quite a bit. And just anybody who can think about, you know, say an executive is doing a presentation, they can use the whiteboard function as they're hosting a Teams meeting, um, you know, right from here. So it's pretty unique. 
see Christy change the backgrounds. The other thing about the backgrounds is you, you can, you know, um, change your device settings from here as you're working on stuff. Um, it's really up to you how you do it, but it's got some pretty unique features. We won't show, because we don't have enough people on this call today, the gallery view, but the gallery view allows you to see up to, well, two things. One is we can have up to 49 people on a call now, but number two is we can actually look or make it look like you're sitting into, uh, in like the back of a classroom or in a big auditorium and have people sitting, you know, sort of, as they say, butts and seats. It's pretty incredible. And so we've had it before. It's amazing how it sort of puts people in different, you know, seats and, how you can kind of look around the room and see the audience differently than when you see it on the bottom of the screen or if you have 49 of us on the screen all over the place. So pretty unique platform. All right, so wanna go back to Zoom, Christy? Yes, let's do it. Thanks, Jessica. Okay, so you'll see that we're back in there. Um, I guess a couple more things that people might wanna understand is for example, you know, our calendars, which are synced up with Outlook. If we wanted to, within a team or within, you know, just have a meeting right off the bat, you know, with, say we want to do a recording, you can hit the button meet now. You can title it meeting with Sean Farrell or, you know, update for the company. And essentially I can blur backgrounds from here. Um, I can also decide before I start the meeting, what I want to do, have my audio and video on, but this is a place where we go in, um, and actually do like live recording. So if I want to publish something to the company, I'll do a live recording from here. And, you know, we love it because ultimately it's something that, you know, we can publish out to the team in one of those channels or into a full team like all staff. So hopefully you guys are using it like that. Um, with that, Christy, do you want me to turn it over to you? I think we wanted to, oh, we have some questions. Yeah, we have some questions and I want to get to, um... I promised everyone we'd show the breakout room. So I want to get to that first and then we'll get to the questions. Um, so if you want to turn it over to me, yep. I will start Go sharing my screen. And here we go. Oops, screen tip. I'll answer that question. Is it possible to review a meeting again? Yes. When you start a meeting in those little three doodads, if you hit record meeting, that meeting gets automatically recorded and then published to that team. So hopefully that helps. Good question. Um, Thank you. I thought she meant, do we get the recording of this? So, but I, Oh, well, that too. Yeah. But yes, yeah, yeah. you get the recording and yes, you can review the meeting again. So um, double whammy. So we're going to try and do this. Um, this is a new feature with um, Microsoft Teams. So if you're used to Zoom, it's a little bit different. Um, from Zoom, when you start a meeting, you can go in and create the breakout rooms as long as you have the licensing with um, Zoom. With Microsoft, your licensing doesn't matter. It's just what, you know, the way it works is you have your team and then within your channels. So someone asked the difference between teams and channels. Here's another way they, that they differ. Within the, the channels are the different breakout rooms. So when you look at, um, sorry, I got all my notes up here, but I wanna make sure I get everything. Um, you wanna make sure you have the team and channel built out first and create the meeting in advance. And so what I mean by that is, if you go to your calendar on the left-hand side, just like Sean was before and starting to create a meeting, you can come up here and click new meeting and it'll take you to this page, just like it looks like an Outlook. Um, and you'll put your information in. I'll add Sean. What you'll see, it's really cool, is here's the suggested times he's available, because right now, obviously, his calendar is, is taken up. So I'll put it for right now. And then what you do is you add a channel. And that's essentially the breakout room. So I'm going to come down to our demo and do general and send this over to Sean. So then you can see it shows up here, test for demo. And then I can do it again, test for demo too, we'll invite Sean. And you know, with breakout rooms, obviously there's gonna be different people in different rooms. This is just for the sake of the demo. We'll go to the demo uh, team and then go to the Christie channel, which I created for my stuff. 
and then I'll send it over to Sean. And we're going to, this is going to be interesting how it works with the microphone. So bear with us. Um, but Sean, let's go ahead and join the first um, breakout room. And we'll show you what that looks like. And then just be sure to mute yourself within Teams. Yep. So I'm going to join that. So here I am, you can see at the top of my screen that it's labeled test for demo. You can see Sean has joined again, like he showed you before show participants, you can see who's in here. So then the other cool thing is um, now your meetings pop out, which before you were stuck in teams. Now it's its own thing. You can minimize it. You can keep doing your thing in teams. Um, so if you go back to your calendar, we're already in the test for demo. We're going to go in to the test for demo too. So now I'm going to join this one. Turn my mic off. So now and I'm, I'm getting on my and on my screen I got the the ask from Christy test for demo too to just join it. It came down in the right hand corner. Of course you guys can't see my screen but awesome. Yeah so if you see my here. other depth go ahead. Yep. Go ahead go ahead. I was say, so now that you see here, I'm in the test for demo two, and I'm still in test for demo one, but I'm on hold. So if you're like a moderator for a breakout room, say that you're a leader of a sales team and you want to break them out into your West Coast territory and your East Coast territory, and you're going to say, you know, everyone's all together at first, and you can have your meeting, you know, with everyone and then say, okay, I'm going to go talk to the West Coast team, the East Coast team. So you can toggle between those. I'm here, but then I can come here and click resume. And now I'm back in here. And if you look over here, now it's in uh, now it's in hold. So it's a cool way to be able to toggle back and forth if you need to break out into different rooms. Um, and you can do, you know, you can do as many as you want of these. You just have to have the channels associated with them. So I know this was like a big ask for people. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we showed you guys how to use it. Um, and there's a great article I found on some best practices that I'm going to include when I send out the email, um, letting you guys know, you know, see the recording and also look through this. Um, one, one of the things that they mention is, you know, you can use OneNote to create um, the breakout room assignments. So you can say, like, if you're not going to do it by East Coast, West Coast or something, say it's a fun game you're doing with the organization. And, um, you know, we're going to have Dan, Michael, Christy, and Corey on this team. Well, we're going to say, here's the breakout room name and here's the link to the breakout room or invite them in the meeting. And so there's some best practices that go along with it because it is a little, you know, there's a couple of moving parts to it, I realize. So um, if you guys have questions, let us know. We're still kind of playing with it and figuring it out ourselves, but um, it's great to see that they're doing this now because this was a big difference between um, Zoom and Teams that, that people are really wanting to see. Yeah, and we had a few questions, Christy, but, um, and I'll answer a couple really quick. Can you make calls outside of, obviously, external phone numbers outside of your own organization? Yes, but you have to have Microsoft Voice or Teams Voice, which is essentially their phone system, if you will, but it's hosted by Microsoft. So I hope that answers that question. And, um, and typically the pricing is anywhere from $8 a user to $15 a user on top of the Office or Microsoft 365 suite. Again, there's so much licensing and a lot of questions around that, but just, just gives you an idea as compared to either other hosted voice platforms. Um, the Teams interface, Slack. Slack is probably the closest platform to Microsoft Teams as far as document management. Yes, it is very similar, this waterfall approach of communication, very similar. What Slack doesn't do that Microsoft does is has the voice option, you know, the, the calling essentially functionality, the hosted voice, and really it is um, got the backend security, which we don't talk about a ton in these webinars that has to be implemented to help with things like threat protection from the outside or on internally how we multi-factor into things. So typically with Slack, you're buying a third-party application to integrate. There's a lot that goes into Office 365 and Teams um, from a uh, security perspective that is not necessarily in Slack. But if you're using Slack, 
and want to integrate Teams for things like audio and video conferencing or voice, Slack is integrated into Teams as well. So I hope that answers that question. Yeah, we, we, have um, and, a blog, we have a blog article about it, so I'll include that in the follow-up email too, so that you can see um, how we compare Teams to Slack. The other thing to note is um, with Slack, there's a limitation, last I checked at least, which was only a couple months ago, but I know all these platforms are trying to keep up with one another. Um, but as of at least a couple months ago, when I wrote this article in the summer, um, I think you can only have up to like 15 people um, in one call or one meeting. So if you're a bigger organization, like we do an all hands staff meeting about every six weeks, COVID or not, just to um, you know stay in touch. Usually it's in person, but we do have, you know, people out in the field, salespeople, field engineers, things like that. So we do need the bandwidth for multiple people to join, especially now when all 60 of us are remote. Um, so, you know, teams can host thousands of users. Um, so if you're a small organization, Slack might work for you, but if, if you, you know, are getting into the more medium and are larger size organizations, you're going to need something like teams um, and then the other biggest differentiator to me with any product that you compare to a microsoft product is security microsoft is going to take the cake every time when it comes to security features enabled so um, that that would be my main differentiators i mean the person who asked the question mentioned the integrations slack has like 800 integrations i think so they definitely um, have they have a little bit more than Teams. Teams does have hundreds as well. Like so, it does integrate with the Microsoft product. But as Sean pointed out earlier, you can integrate SurveyMonkey, Salesforce, Box. So and they're at they're constantly adding. So depends on your needs and your size. But I'll send the article out so you guys can take a look um, and let me know. Hey, Christy, so, we had one more question come up, and I guess it's uh, education K through twelve and um, you know, higher ed, actually they make, a, they make a team for education. And actually, if you're in the world of education of any sort, obviously you do get a different license, which is essentially free for students and teachers um, if you're using Microsoft Teams. So it is a free product. There are some add-ons that you might wanna buy with security that cost some money from an education perspective. But yes, you can host classrooms within Teams and ultimately integrate it with other products that um, I've seen products like Flipgrid or um, some of the, the BlackBot and some of the other platforms that are out there for LMS, learning management systems, integrated right into Teams. So it's just a matter of integrating and understanding how the workflows work out inside of Teams out to the students. Awesome. Someone asked about using Teams for free and, and how they would go about that. There, there is a free license. So if you wanted to play around, you could set it up and... Um, you know, if you want, there is a web app, you know, we're, we're in the desktop application now, but if you wanted to get familiar just in the web app, um, you know, just start playing around. Um, once you create a team, um, creating the channels, play around in it. Uh, we have a YouTube playlist. If you go to Manage Solutions YouTube, pro YouTube profile, there's a playlist called Office 365 User Training. So we did this training for those who aren't aware from March when COVID first came around through end of May. And so we have, you know, tons and tons of how to's, um, especially on the administrative side, getting teams set up and running, how to start a meeting, how to invite people, all that good stuff. Um, so I will include that also in the follow-up so that you guys can see past ones that we've done for the newer users. Um, and then Sean, I'd, I'd love to end on this question. Um, how easy is it for you to use Teams for someone who's not a Microsoft 365 user, do you need a Microsoft account in order to sign up? And I'll just say before I turn it over to Sean, I am a millennial, so I'm pretty good with technology. I grew up on instant messenger and AOL email and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, but I had never used Teams until I joined Managed Solution in, in early 2018 and sat next to Danielle, who absolutely loves Teams and showed me all how to use it. And it's just, it's, I feel like it's so intuitive. It's so easy to use and figure out. Um, and again, we have training materials on it. We have a getting started with Teams guide we can send out. And YouTube has a ton of, of great how to's but done by Microsoft employees. So um, we'll send a bunch of resources for you guys, but 
Sean, if they wanted to sign up as a Teams user, you want to tell us tell us how we can help them? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, the, so a couple things. One is, you know, you can create a free Microsoft Live ID um, if you go to Microsoft.com and and um, ultimately do as an individual user. So that's all free. You you can you know get Outlook for free, much like let's say Gmail. Those kind of options are available if you want to play around with it. In truth, the best experience we have in getting companies to adopt Teams is by spending time with the executives in an organization and doing what we call a day in the life. It's called a customer immersion experience, showing Teams and allowing these anonymous, you know, uh, these executives to have these profiles that we've created for them in Teams and to let them play around with it. And we sort of sit behind the scenes and facilitate um, what's going on and say, hey, why don't you call, you know, John Smith and all of a sudden they jump on a call and they start to click different buttons and they realize how easy it is from, you know, intuitive as Christy said, but ultimately, we know it's almost like they're figuring out, wow, we could use this in our organization, but we just kind of help them along through the process. Um, we can also show them how things integrate with teams. So I think that helps as well. The other thing that came up was the rich experience, like on the cell phone. And again, you can't really see my cell phone here, but I can't tell you enough how I jump onto Teams meetings um, from myself and especially when I'm out and about and just leverage it for the video piece. And again, not necessarily when I'm driving or leverage it to just do quick, you know, catch up on all staff chats or activities that are happening in the organization. So it's just as intuitive on the phone and it doesn't matter what type of phone as it is on the, the, the I guess, desktop or laptop you're using. Yeah, and it's, it's great, especially um, for those who travel a lot for work or, or travel for for fun when it's a little bit more normal too. But, um, you know, I, I can count, you know, times I've been at the airport and Tina needs something or Sean needs something. And instead of saying like, oh, I'm about to board the plane, I'll do it when I land, I can quickly pull up Teams and be like, hey, this is where you can find the document. And it's so easy. So it's really, you know, mobile friendly, especially today's world where a lot of us are remote and on the go. And um, so hopefully that was helpful. We're, we're over past the hour now. So I want to respect everyone's time, but I will send out this recording. I'll send you the YouTube playlist, the Slack comparison blog, um, and the best practices article that I found on the breakout rooms because they are new and um, we're kind of learning as we go. So I think that'll be helpful for those looking to play with that a little bit more. So thanks for joining us. We'll be here again in another two weeks. We don't have our topic dialed in yet, but as soon as we do, you'll get an email and I'll let you know. Um, so I hope we'll see you in two weeks and thanks for joining us here today. Have a great Thanks time. everyone. Bye. Bye.